New Standard Group has been a leader and innovator in loose sow housing and electronic sow feeding solutions throughout the years. We want to invite you to join us on a walkthrough of one of our most recent projects. Honey Grove Barn is a technology progressive hog barn located in northwestern Missouri. This barn will house up to 5,000 hogs and has the latest in automation and comfort features for the pigs. We'll join Tim Kerbis of New Standard Group on a tour of the facility. Hey guys, it's uh, Tim Kerbis here with New Standard Group. Uh, we're just at a Honey Grove uh, cell farm that we're building right now. We thought, well, the pigs are coming in a couple days. We're a little bit behind on construction, but we should at least take a, a moment to walk through the barn, give you some, uh, uh, just a little bit of a walking tour. Standing in the uh, gestation barn, of course, when, when you do any kind of construction on a sow barn, this is the first one that is needed, is the gestation barn. The farrowing um, is down the hallway, but that will take a couple more months to complete. So we'll do a walk through, just kind of give a little sense of what we're, what we're working so before the pigs get here let's go for a walk we're standing actually in one of the um, ESF pens that we've designed for gilts specifically so you'll see we actually have a fairly high count of feed stations uh, because we do like to give give gilts a little bit more time and access to feed stations um, in this particular group we have a group of seven feed stations um, all coalescing into one common corridor one of the biggest, most uh, important things about making a, a big pen like this, it'll have 300 animals perhaps in it, uh, work well, is to separate the entrance to the feed station and the exit. Anybody who doesn't do that is just asking for trouble, to be honest, because, and this is kind of key, and it's been studied, it's been proven, uh, the, the, this is what makes these barns one of the big factors of many but one of the biggest factors to make these barns work well is you need to separate the animals that are full from the animals who are still looking for feed they have different mindsets they have different hormonal balances even uh, so having any kind of system where the animals who exit from feeding uh, can interact immediately with animals who haven't eaten yet is just a good way to raise stress levels in a barn. Now I'll talk a lot over different things, maybe not all of this in this current uh, format, about different things that really make a barn work well. And we view these pens in general um, as, as something where we need to remove every improper stress factor. These, uh, these are highly social, highly uh, habitual, very intelligent animals, and they are very prone to little things that can start stress. So we do everything possible to remove every little stress factor. That's how you increase production. That's how you reduce or eliminate almost uh, any kind of uh, unhealthy interaction. So what we do when we normally design a pen like this is make sure that the animals all come to one location to eat, and when they exit, they do not interact whatsoever with animals still waiting to eat. That's key. Remember that always. Um, so anyway, this is, uh, in this particular one, is a NEDAP uh, station setup. We use them quite uh, often, uh, almost exclusively, because they do make some pretty good equipment. Um, uh, so uh, they're not, the, the side panels aren't in here yet. We can still see there's, like I said, some construction. Uh, tomorrow, as a matter of fact, we'll actually have some guys in here programming. Therefore, all the covers are still off on the uh, feed stations. I'm going to lead you more on a, on a flow of how the pigs might interact uh, or might move through the room, if you will. So as I said, you'd, when they're done eating, they would commonly exit through this central separation. And, and we've actually have a really cool feature. I'm going to back up and get distracted, but here we go. As they exit, we're actually using a weight monitor so we can actually track every one of the uh, sows or gilts in, in this instance, as they uh, grow every day and through gestation, we can track her and see if she's on a curve that she should be on, or if she has a nutrition problem, maybe too much nutrition or not enough. Uh, that's, that's a feature pretty much exclusive to the NEDAP equipment. Um, one of the reasons that we, we do use it is that all these you know, features that allow us to collect data and actually make decisions based on that data. We also have built into the system automatically as if somebody happens to lose their RFID tag, 
they will automatically be sorted out so that we can deal with them. Therefore, nobody really ever goes without feed. This gate right here, most of what I'm walking through is still just wide open, so this gate is normally closed. It doesn't really make a very obvious pen right now, but we're still under construction. As the girls exit, they'd be coming into this area here, and here we would have um, what, what <laughs> jokingly can be called a little bit of a peep show, but really it's a, uh, there's a, a bore that will be in that pen over there, and the interaction, the only interaction that they'll have with the, uh, the sows or gilts would be through that hole. Now we can track that with, a, um, uh, with the uh, tags that the girls have and know how often she visits, and in a well-functioning, healthy pen, you will catch almost every animal that is returning to estrus or coming back in heat. Therefore, you don't have any open, non-pregnant animals in this pen. Now, it's key to catch those animals quick because if you have disturbances, if you have social disorder in your pen, one of the key factors could be, is, is, is often, the girls who are actually coming back in heat, they can be interacting differently because her hormones are actually different than most animals in the pen. This area that we have here is a congregating area post feeding. So what you end up with is a lot of girls who are looking for a bit of social interaction. You get a bit more of the dunging happening uh, and, and they'll go for another drink of water. You see some, some mixing and, and congregating here. As they kind of hang out here for a while, most of these animals will have their own group, their cl own clique, if you will. So we've actually designed it properly to size for a standard group of animals that will develop, which in sows is uh, about eight to 10 animals, which just logically would suggest that for every eight to 10 sows, you probably have a fairly dominant sow who has her group of girls that she hangs out with. Now we've done enough looking research. It's quite fascinating. The girls will always use the same nesting area that they hang out in every day. They'll hang out in the same group. They'll get up together to go and eat. They'll, um, uh, they'll eat at the same time virtually every single day. So people who know their animals, true stockmen who walk through a barn and know their animals know that if they ever want to find their pet, and there's always pets that develop in these pens, they, they'll know every day where she's laying because they don't deviate. They're very habitual. Um, we, uh, we like to use the panel tim uh, plastic for nesting. It's solid, it's secure, and uh, it's uh, very biosecure because it's a food grade plastic. Um, you really can't ask for anything better. And on top of that, it's nice and reflective, so it actually adds a bit to the light in the room. So come around, now this whole pen, as we've got it laid out, is a giant horseshoe type shape or a, or a constant left oval. Um, for you NASCAR fans, the sows are always turning left too. Um, as she, she'll have to go all the way back around, come down as we're walking here and, and come all the way around. Again, this, these gates aren't closed, so it's hard to define a pen, but it's essentially just a oval track. So she has to come out, when she exits, she has to come all the way around and back up this alleyway to get to the feed station. And I can assure you, they try that once and realize it's really not worth it. What you end up with is if you feed her right, understand her um, uh, makeup and how her body functions, we feed her in such a fashion that by the time she gets to the nesting areas, digestion is set in, set in and she's really just looking for a nap like I typically do right after lunch. Um, so it's a very good way to, to make a pen work well, to create healthy interaction, foster healthy groups, and, and actually really lower the stress levels um, so that these animals don't start, you know, picking on each other or just taking the irritation out on somebody. And that's, and that's kind of a big thing is that <clears throat> if any one of these girls gets irritated, she doesn't keep it to herself. 
whatever might stress her out, she shares it with everybody. And that just builds like a snowball. So we want to make sure always that the stress levels are kept low uh, just for the health of the animals, which is product, productivity related. So I'm just walking uh, slowly as I talk towards, back towards the feed stations again because I want to go over a little bit more about how we feed them, some of the, uh, the thought process of what we do, why we, why we do it the way we do, if you will. Um, there's, there's everything, everything we do here is, is with an understanding that we are trying to lower the stress levels, to, to f- give this animal what she needs, uh, to just, just be happy, to be uh, productive and healthy. And, and it all boils down to give her, give her the things that she's looking for, give her the things that suit her well, and, and, and she'll respond well. Uh, an ana- a sow really has three main things in a pen that she needs to deal with. She wants to know where she eats, she wants to know where she sleeps, and the part that the, the, the remainder, the leftover part that doesn't cover those two is where she's going to do her business, if you will. But for her, food is key. It is elemental. She has to be secure in the knowledge that no matter what, she'll get fed. She has to understand her, just she has to intuitively know that she's okay. She doesn't have to compete for food. She doesn't have to worry about, am I going to get enough? Am I going to be chased out? Am I going to have problems eating? So we always want to keep that thought in mind is how can we take away any kind of fear over availability of food or in, 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 in some aspects, uh, take away any kind of um, just concern that how she wants to eat is going to be interrupted or not the way she wants to eat. So uh, we've found a few things. Uh, we um, we want to feed her at such a pace that digestion begins before she's done eating. We don't want her to eat so fast and give her her food so fast that she's actually consumed everything before digestion sits in. And that's, and that's for a reason. Um, if we can get digestion to commence, um, it changes her hormonal balance. It, it, it starts, her brain starts sending signals, or her stomach, brain, brain, stomach, start getting signals that she's full. Just like you will if, if you take one portion and then wait for five minutes, you likely won't go back for a second portion. But if you're at a buffet and you're like, the food's really good, I'm rushing back up there. Yeah, we can all eat more, but then you get that overfull feeling. Very similar, what we want to do is give her that full feeling before she's asked to leave, before she's done eating. Because then, when she's done eating, she's not really looking for more food. She's not really agitated. She's like, yeah, I'm good. I got what I need. The, it's, it, I didn't have to worry about it. I didn't have to rush. Nobody was bothering me while I was eating. And what happens then is that most times when she gets that feeling, she leaves on her own, just exits, go forward and done. Sometimes she hangs around a bit, the gate will unlock, and she'll hear that gate unlock. This is assuming a well-functioning pen and everything else is, is handled properly. That gate will unlock somebody else might start to come in and they don't even make direct uh, physical contact and this other one just wanders off because she's like, I'm good, no problems. If, on the other hand, we don't achieve the, the, that point where she starts to feel full, what will happen is she's going to stay here. She's going to say, I want more. I'm not full. I'm going back for seconds. I'd like to go back for seconds. How come I'm not getting seconds? And then the gate unlocks or somebody else wants to come in and she's I'm not done I'm not leaving I don't feel like leaving because I want more food you start a conflict point and and invariably the one coming in will win because the one facing forward cannot defend herself so you have an angry girl here and you have an angry girl here because she can't get in and then you start a stress point. That's actually a pretty big one. You can start a really big stress point there. It gets even worse because when you start that competition of sorts, the middle one, or the, the, the one behind typically loses because it gives somebody else a, a chance to compete. And you sometimes get a third one involved. 
all of that has to be eliminated, and it can be. We do quite well, just a little factor. We have to get to the point where digestion commences, the, the full signal gets sent to our brain, all of that's eliminated. We've found, as long as we can get the animals eating into a 15 minute, it's, it varies a little bit, uh, 13 to 16 minutes, if you will. If we can get them eating throughout that time frame, there's never an animal that doesn't leave willingly, that doesn't just say, yeah, I'm good, I'm going to go. It, and I've run some tests and I've studied some and I've seen some in barns that are working differently, programmed differently. If we go down to, say, feeding for a 10 to 11 minute cycle, you will have all kinds of conflict develop. It's just a clear shift in the whole barn. And what we start to see is animals competing for the entrance, animals who are rushing the gates when the cycle starts for the 24 hour period. You'll see this whole area start to congregate with animals. It's unhealthy, it's noisy, it's stressful, it just doesn't really work well. And it's always a clear thing that I tell guys is that's, that's what you wanna watch for is that if you get too much congregating at any given time in this area. It's a sure sign that the animals are not secure in their, in their food source. And there it might be the factors that we talked about. It might be something else. It might be just something back in training that, that isn't being done right that generates um, uh, bad responses to the feed station. So that's a, just a little bit of what we try and watch for. Very broad strokes, uh, high 10,000 foot view, if you will. So there we go, that's what we have for a, a, a basic layout and we're back to where we started. We, we've set this barn up so that we can actually um, batch farrow, which for those who know what it means, I don't need to explain. For those who don't know what it means, it doesn't mean anything anyway, but it just means that they would be breeding every other week or every four weeks. Um, and therefore farrowing every other week or every four weeks. So they have quite a significant amount of crates in here, but we typically um, re-enter animals into the pen as soon as the heat cycle is over because that is the healthiest way to, to interact with a pen. And there's method upon method that we can go over. I could spend another half hour talking about how to you know, enter animals into a pen. I just really like this, is that this is one of the first places where I've seen somebody do full-on homemade stainless steel breeding stalls, and they made the uh, tubing for these stalls as well as bent it. So just, I find that kind of cool, to be honest. Uh, obviously still not quite finished, but we're getting there. So we'll do a quick walk down the barn here. All we've got is more mess to clean up right now, forgive this. Um, more pens we have now we're moving into we had come out of a gilt pen now we get to a sow pen that's very similar in size but less stations because uh, sows can interact differently with feed stations um, uh, so we, we can put a little bit of different balance on how many sows go on a feed station um, and then just something here that we do when we're stalking the barn. This might look weird to anybody who's familiar with a sow barn or an ESF barn. We actually have self feeders in here. Don't think we're crazy. We really aren't. Well, not about this anyway. Um, these feeders are just for the initial stalking. We're gonna be bringing pigs into the barn, a lot of pigs initially into the barn, and really don't have any place to store all of them while they're developing. So some of the pigs will come in, or the, the gilts, only 125 pounds, far from ready to, uh, to train on the ESF or, or think about breeding. We just need to store them someplace until they get old enough. So what we're doing is actually using some of these pens temporarily just to grow out the gilts until they're old enough. So that's why I didn't start down here is because anybody who's seen this before think we're crazy. We've got feeders where we've got electronic feeding. This is temporary and then within a couple months, these feeders will be removed and these will turn into general sow pens. I think that covers most of what I wanted to talk about here. Um, again, it's just, you know, more of the same uh, over and over again. Uh, the only other thing we might mention in this uh, particular thing, we're actually doing a lot of electronic feeding more so than most people um, uh, because we're actually doing electronic dosing uh, over to breeding stalls as well, and that still needs to be installed. So every every breeding stall will have its own 
electronic feeding motor so that we can individually uh, know what we're feeding each animal. They're only in the crates long enough to get bred essentially. So they'll come out of the farrowing, they'll be in here for a couple of days. And you know, when they're coming out of farrowing, a lot of them need a lot of nutrition. They've put all of their body energy and they've depleted their body energy just to producing milk for the piglets. So they need a lot of feed just for a short span, just to get back on track. So what we try and do is get as much feed as possible into, into these girls in that, you know, five to seven day window when they're in the breeding stalls. It helps flush her ovaries so that she has more eggs that can be uh, uh, fertilized, uh, but it helps her get a really good jump start on body condition as well to return into gestation. So what we do is we'll bring them in here and, and, they'll, and, when, they, and they, when they detect the heat, they'll breed them. And then as soon as the heat cycle is over, they'll reintroduce them to the pen. So these crates are here. They're nicely built crates, but quite honestly, the girls spend five days out of a five month cycle in a crate just to get her body back on track and get her bred. Um, and it's, and it's, a, a, it's, a, it's a necessary thing. It's not a bad thing, but what's really fun uh, to watch is, is these girls know where home is. And, and, and this is something we have to do to get them bred. It's, it's safer for the animals and they need that, they need that individual time uh, just to get their, their health back or their, not even health so much as perhaps um, just their body condition. So it's a good place to give them a little bit of a break, get as much feed as you can into them and then get them back to the pens. But when you let these girls out and they know they're going home, most of these girls are just like, show me the door, show me the door. I want to go back into the pen. This is again, fun, but assuming a well-functioning, healthy, low stress pen, it's quite, actually, I love it. I love watching it uh, to see these girls. They know that this is where home is. This is where they want to be in the big pens with, if you will, their friends. Um, so there's, there's a lot of stuff, um, anybody who loves working with animals, this is a great place to work. This is a great barn for stockmen, guys who truly love to do, do what they do. Um, this is rewarding. The animals respond well. Um, I've actually had places that tell me that switching from stalls to, uh, open pen gestation done right will actually improve the demeanor of their overall workforce, which I love to hear, it's kind of cool.